with optics. We weren't. We were just like, how do we get through this all together? And then get we saw what? The filming, there was a production element that we were all trying to navigate. But the, for us, the difference is which should have taken priority, the optics or us? Like the strategy or the marriage? What is the strat? What was the strategy? We felt it was, it was the men trying to strategize. Mm, 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 mm. Hey guys, welcome to Little Black Button 91. Listen, I may get in trouble again because I got to say the word again accountability, okay? Because neither the men nor the women were accountable, but specifically the women because they were trying to palm it all on the men all the way throughout for the show. And listen, let me say this now. Listen, I'm not saying the men weren't a problem because they clearly were because they organized some ad madness but they weren't the only issue and the women were trying to palm off accountability with it's not me it's them i i was controlled i was manipulated into agreeing into a situation that i didn't want to be in baby if you don't want to be in it you don't have to be in it okay if you don't want to be in it you don't have to be in it so let me say it again people have been here unaccountable but let me ask like jesus asked peter three times will you be accountable Will you be accountable? Will you be accountable? Okay, all right, because they weren't accountable. Okay, all right, <laughs> okay. They weren't being accountable. I just want to say they weren't being accountable. This is what I'm talking about. No, um, listen, look, I think this, I think we'll be honest, um, you know, I want to be honest with you and, and fair. Look, I missed obviously a lot of the episodes. So when I came to watch this episode, I was like, okay, I was expecting, you know, people to come out here. It's the first time we've seen nobody with their couples. Okay, great. Okay, nobody's with their couples. Then I'm seeing the situation where, you know, I call him Trevor. I don't even call him Kevin. I call him Trevor, all right? Sean's going to be on in a few minutes. I call him Trevor. Trevor was uh, asking questions and, uh, you know, listen, hey, accountability just, you know, it's not everybody's strong suit, right? Um, he asks, he asks uh, uh, you know, both the men and the women. And, you know, the way that uh, Becca... You know, Becca was literally uh, the spokes. No, not even Becca. Sorry, Emily was first a spokesperson and Becca. And I want to be very honest. I do feel sorry for Be Becca. I do feel sorry for Emily. Right? They had doo doo men. Let's be honest. Okay, Austin is lying to us. He's not telling us the whole truth. Um, he, you know, he could be gay. He could be a virgin. He could be uh, unattracted to, to to Becca. This whole I will have to wait six months before I sleep with you. I don't want to hear it, okay? All right? This whole, I, I got to wait six months before I sleep with you. I'm not about it. I'm so sorry. You married, okay? You came on a show to be married. Stop lying to us. Stop lying to the audience. So straight out the thing, okay? All right? So I definitely hear for Becca. She got robbed. Um, Austin still trying to lie on us. I'm not really about it, okay? Uh, Emily, I get it. Brennan was controlling. No, no, no. Can we be honest? Brennan was controlling. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> Brennan was controlling. Let's, let's let's just call it what it is. Brennan was controlling. Okay. All right. Look, call it as it is. Yeah. And and that's why I do feel sorry for Emily in that regard. Um, you know, uh, you know. So I I I definitely um, definitely. Um, it was like, okay, cool. Um, but you know, Emily acting as if she didn't have no she had no choice in the matter. You acting like you don't have no choice in the matter, Emily. All right? If I make a plan and you go along with it, you gotta be accountable. You went along with the thing. I don't know. What are you palming it on me for? Listen, Brennan is a problem. Don't get it twisted. I'm all here. Okay? I'm all for it. Brennan is a problem. But what I'm saying is there was a plan and you went along with it. You were an accessory to the murder. You know what I mean? But you trying to you trying to remove the accountability and be like, I was manipulated into such a no, you weren't. No, you weren't. You were an accessory to the situation. Take take just admit that. Stop putting it on the men only, right? And and talk about how you're hurt by the situation, which is fine. If you're hurt by the situation, which is fair. We get it. Okay? You are hurt by the situation, but let's not pretend as if you didn't go along with a plan. Let's talk about Claire and Cameron, because these two are both manipulators. Okay? All right? These are the two of the worst. Okay? All right? Claire was out here lying. Cam, we know, definitely was lying, because our old boy was acting as if he don't know what he was doing. And he's been, he's been testing. He's been, he's been moving a little bit, you know, a little bit some way from the beginning. And so has Claire. Right? Claire, I need you to stop pretending. Okay? At first, when you were talking to Trevor... Kevin, Trevor, Kevin, at the very beginning, all right, you you were saying that you 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 did fancy uh, Cameron from the very beginning, but when they went into the one on one, when they asked you if you fancied uh, Cameron on the very beginning, you went and said no, you didn't. 
I said, which one is it? I said, we know you didn't fancy him from the very beginning. We know that. So why are you pretending as if you fancied him from the very beginning? Right? Be accountable. Okay? You know you're lying. And then you're trying to shift it. No, it's you. And it's you. And it's you. It's like, no, 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 baby. It's you. It's you too. Okay? Yeah, he came out of a plan. Yes, he came out of a plan that was deceitful. Yes, but you joined him. And then, and then the way he said she didn't visit him, uh, visit him at a hospital. Now that one sh had me shook. I said, whoever's lying like this one is serious. They got a lying problem. Who, uh, whatever happened at the hospital, somebody is lying hardcore, and I mean to their core. I mean dangerously hardcore lying because the way they both were fighting. She was like, "Yes, I visited my hospital." He's like, "You damn right did not." She was like, "Yes, I did. I definitely visited the hospital, baby. Either you visit or you didn't, Cameron. Either she visited or she didn't visit. Did she visit? Do we have receipts? Because." And then he was like, you didn't visit, you cancelled several times. And then when you can, I was like, oh, this don't sound good at all. This don't sound good at all. This don't sound good at all. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, listen, it's crazy. Um, uh, you know, obviously, Lowen and Orion, we really knew about them. Um, you know, uh, yeah, so... Yeah, I know that. Now, why Michael decided to say no on decision day, I don't know. I didn't watch the rest, rest of the season. I don't know if Chloe did some mad things, but what I saw in part one of Reunion, he offered nothing that would say why he actually really divorced her. Um, if anything, she should have been divorcing you. I thought she would have been divorcing you because at points, I know she was questioning masculinity. I know at points she was smiling, but she really wasn't smiling indoors, I know. Uh, so, you know, I want to say first and foremost, you know, there's something about this situation, you get me? Yeah? So I was confused as to why he decided he didn't want to marry her no more. Um, yeah, I don't know. So, yeah, that was weird as well. I, I, I don't really get that. Um, um, yeah, that was weird. Yeah. <laughs> Chloe changed her tune off to Michael Gavetta Dimash. <laughs> Ooh, baby. Let me get Sean on anyway. Yes, yeah, Sean, Cap. What are you telling me, bro? Hey, what's up? I was like trying to edit that comment and I was like deleted it, but you saw it before I uh, <laughs> before I could edit it out. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> we finally look, look, look who it is. We finally got your attention, huh? It took uh the banger of all re reunions, even lifetime, is saying this is the worst. Worst cast <laughs> in history. <laughs> they didn't say worse, but they said the most contentious. You know? Listen, they were wild. Yeah, no, I, I think, the, listen, it was the plots. It was the lies. Who's telling who? It was the dodgeball of accountability. Uh, the ladies was trying to pin it all on the men. Like, they were the innocent victims. Wearing uh, their 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 pink colors for women empowerment, but they've been doing that all season in the after party, and uh, eventually Rudy got hip to them. That's why, you know, Emily was starting to 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 get into it with Keisha a little bit because at first she was seeing like, oh, I can see the guys, and then she was like, nah, Emily. <laughs> I'm going to need you to be accountable. What did he say? <laughs> Start drilling down, asking her some questions, and then she got pissed off. So, yeah, I'm sorry. These women ain't no victims. You know, I'm not saying the guys are perfect and the women are are the, are the, are the villains. No, not at all. <clears throat> they all was in it together until they <laughs> weren't. Okay? They all was in it together. And I'm glad Chloe stood on her peg. I like her. You know, she was like, yeah, y'all can do the pink. <laughs> y'all stay over there with your pink colors. I'm good over here. I don't need to be part of the bitty better, bitty better clubs. You know, I was, I was so annoyed. No victims here. No, listen, um, listen. Yeah, I think, I think, like I said, both folks were problems here and they both need to take accountability. Um, both the men and the women needed to. Um, yeah, when the women were doing solidarity, pink ladies, I just knew it was going to be long. Um, you know what I mean? Um, and even Chloe was in purple, so it wasn't even that far away. She she, <laughs> she wasn't that far away from the pink. Um, yeah, but it was, I can't lie to you, that was a wild thing there. 
You know what I mean? Them ones there was wild, bro. Like at the end of the day, um, you know, I just think to myself, this. Listen, and and the real split though, obviously, like people are hurt. Let's be honest, people are hurt. We and we can validate the we can validate the feelings of being hurt. Um, you know, we can validate those feelings of being hurt and um, a, a, and stuff. And yeah, obviously, someone said in the chat, look, Chloe's the only one that got some sex because uh, it it is bad when all the men decide they ain't gonna give you out no they ain't gonna give out no poswa. They don't give out no dilash. It it must be bad, and I'm telling you that. See, every season we've always had something like wild going with one maybe couple, but to have all the couples and the men have said we ain't giving out no delash. Okay, we ain't giving out no delash to any of these ladies. Yeah, yeah, of course. The, yeah, ladies are questioning the emotional connection. I'm qu I'm questioning the fact that they looked at you and thought to themselves, we you ain't even worth the delash. No, something's up there. Something's a problem there. Something's not quite right. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think what they what they figured out, and rightfully so. <clears throat> now I think every couple had their own little thing going on, right? So everybody wasn't kind of lumped in together, but um, I think every couple had a thing. And um, the guys realized, look, if we even touch these women, um, it's going to be a problem because you see how they're acting already. Let them mm. tell it. If the guy wasn't coming with receipts and Cameron was the spokesperson, because he was like, don't, I'm going to air it out. <laughs> Cameron is the Laron of mass. <laughs> you going to get his work. <laughs> he's the, he's the Laron of, of maps, you know? So he's got his hand in a little bit of everything. So I just feel like he would have gone there if Claire wouldn't have, would have let him. But Claire didn't mm. want that guy. You know what I mean? And she's trying to play it off. I'm like, Claire, how you fix your mouth to lie? Like, yes, I'm attracted to him. You're lying, Claire. Stop it. Like, I just wanted her to stop it. We have never seen an attraction. The same way that Claire did not want um, Cameron is the same way that Austin didn't want Becca. You know what I mean? So... Mm. I don't know what it is. There's a lot of speculation. I don't know which one is what, but for whatever reason, I'm like, bro, just say you weren't attracted to her. Like, why are you keep sticking to this story and trying to like piece this slide together? Like, he definitely aggravated me. But what's her what's her name is in Atlanta Delulu. You know, Becca is in complete Delulu, and she's like trying to, to to make sense of it all it's like baby girl you can't you tell it's like can't you tell that he's not into you like what what do you need like how many signs and wonders does, do, does she need you know to understand that this man don't like you yeah listen i can't lie to you um uh, you know i was uh, <laughs> Do you know the, the most painful one? Yeah, is definitely the Becca and Austin one, because <laughs> I just know that that guy dragged this season, and I mean he dragged this season. Okay, um, he dragged it so bad, uh, literally to a point <laughs> um, where uh, you know uh, dragged it to a point where um, you know that 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 it got to a point where I, I just know Becca was just confused. You know what I mean? Like the old boy had given ex excuses and given all different points of reasons as to why he couldn't do something. You know, at one point he said he, you know, they hugged and he pushed her off and said, you horny girl. I said, yeah, that, that I said, damn. <laughs> Yo, these, some of these guys hated these women. I can't lie to you. They, they, they were not, they were not for it. Let's be honest. I don't even like, I'm not even gonna lie. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's be that's beyond hate. That is vitriol. Vi it's pure vitriol. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> how, and they weren't even on camera. <laughs> how is old girl just trying to? Yo, she was like, this is when I'm with women when it's like the bare minimum. She was like grasping for the bare minimum. When she said, I asked him if we could shower with our clothes on <laughs> and he still denied me. What? <laughs> what in the world? 
This is your whole wife, bro. <laughs> you signed up for Married at First Sight and she's begging to take a shower with you with your clothes on. And you're like, nah, I'm going to pass. That is beyond hate. Like, come on. <laughs> what is that? Have you ever, like, what have you ever heard of anything like that? Are we 12? Like, what are we doing? Like, what are we doing? I've He's never heard repellent. of anything so ridiculous. <laughs> He said, don't touch me, don't touch me, don't touch me. Okay, all right. Um, listen, you know, I like to keep a good firm distance. And after those six months, then you can touch me. Okay. Um, or three to six months, actually, just to say, you know. Yeah, his, his one was the worst one because he got caught out a bit. He, he, he couldn't even defend himself. When Beckham was saying, listen, hey, you know, I even asked you how much time do you need? And he, he said, oh, no, I thought I answered it. No, 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 you didn't. Okay, all right. Because you, you only answered when, uh, uh, when Keisha asked you um, and they showed that. And you know she was looking for answers. I felt I felt bad for Becca. I can't lie to you. Like she clearly was trying, 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 um, you know, to try and get a little bit of a delash, you know, a little bit of a hug, a little bit of some type of emotional, physical care from from Austin, and uh, none of it was happening. The boys kept on rejecting her over and over and over and over again, and I feel bad now. You know, now it makes me even think about the fact that you know that window scene. She could have been out the window. You know what I mean? She could have been out the window that time when he was doing a little obstacle course. She could have been out the window. You know what I'm saying to you? So I was like, listen, Cap. And and um old boy Brennan hated, he hated Emily. He hated her. Hated with a passion. <laughs> he was like seething. It was like <laughs> But I don't blame her. Because, I don't blame him because her personality, I, I just, she was too chaotic. She was like zero accountability. It's like, I'm sorry, we can say it now. Everybody was trying to protect her in the beginning. Oh, it doesn't matter that she's had all these hookups and no relationships. Don't slut shame her. No, she's not wifey material. She's unhinged. She's unhinged. And he peeped it. But he's he's a little cuckoo too. I'm not gonna hold you. I'm not gonna sit up here and say, oh, you know, he's an innocent, he's such a good guy. No, the, the dude is a little tick tick boom, it's just right under the surface, you know what I mean? He's not gonna scream and yell, but he's like right under here. Yeah. So for her betterment, they didn't work out. Thankfully, he didn't like her because if he would have got a hold of her, he would have ruined her life. Listen, yeah, Brennan's one was just, I can't lie to you. I, I, I mean, listen, Emily's annoying, but I don't think she deserved all of that. You know what I'm saying? She, um, I think it's a, great, it's a great learning curve for her now. She can speak up and be strong because I saw her, you know, on the reunion. She was speaking up. She was stronger. You know, she let, she let us know that she's, you know, she's got some boundaries and she ain't going to be played with. And I'm, I was actually happy about that. I can't lie to you. I, I like to see her in that space because Brennan really did do her dirty. Like if Dr. Pia can come in there, he tried to control the situation. Dr. Pia had to tell him, and Dr. Onomata Pia had to tell him three times, my boy, listen, needs you to back down. Then, you know, I know that it was bad. Do you know what I'm saying to you? Um, but yeah, no, um, you know, it's, it's interesting to, to, to see with Brennan, I think um, Brennan, yeah, there's deeper issues with Brennan. Like, he's got to think about how he relates on an emotional level, you know what I mean? Like, how he connects with women. But, yeah, he really didn't like her. Like, he really didn't. Like, you know when you don't like someone because you don't want to do anything for them. Um, you know, like she was saying, he, like she said, oh, he was punishing me. Like, if I do this right, he'll stay for a day or whatever. If I didn't do this, he'll go away. And it's like, he doesn't like her, doesn't want her. Never did, never wanted to. And that's why he could not lend himself to her. You know what I mean? Um... But yeah, it'd be like that. She didn't understand that he was sparing her. But I think the thing about her, and you might have missed some of this, she's trying to play innocent. And she was one of the main ringleaders of, oh, let's just women need to band together and let's be strong and da 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 Nah, baby girl, you need to be accountable for your actions. It's so funny how we can cross parallel some of these people from the different shows because... If you would have really watched Clock Emily a lot more, she got uh, Alexis. I'm not going to say that's all Alexis, but some of the reactivity, some of the explosiveness, she got a little Alexis in her, you know? And I definitely, you know, I think that Emily liked Brennan. That's the difference. You know, she liked him, but he was like, nah, 
I already see you're going to just wreak havoc on my life. Too, too much drinking, too, you're just all over the place, you know, going to trigger him because he has some issue, issues with alcohol and his, I think his dad or something like that. His parents and his family said he had a temper. The two of them just wouldn't have meshed. He actually did her a favor by not even entertaining her because they would have just triggered her each other. But at the end of the day, she needs to get herself together and learn how to, you know, um, one, be accountable for the things that you did because she conveniently forgets. She tries to use all the terminology. Oh, he was gaslighting me. Meanwhile, you, what were you doing? You know, you were being rude. She was like, oh, I'm not nasty. Meanwhile, I don't know if you remember, but there was a point where she was making fun of Chloe and Michael's vows. She was being hella rude to them. You know, like she's one of those people, like if she's not happy, she can't see happiness for you. Like when she's good, she's got her drinks and she's having a good time. She's a party girl. She's good. When she's not getting her way and getting what she wants, she's rude. You're mute. Thank you. Yeah, no, I said I know what you mean. Um, it's tight. I can't lie to you. <laughs> it's tight. It's tight. It really is. Um, yeah, no, no, no. I, th I think the situation is a bit is a bit wild. Um, you know, like I said, I, I don't think Emily's innocent because obviously she went along with the plan too. Um, and that's why, you know, her standing up, I, I get, and again, we can always validate how people feel. But your behavior we don't have to agree with right so you know she's t a totally entitled to feeling like disrespected you know unloved uncared for unkept um unappreciated um you know and all that kind of stuff but this bandwagon that that she jumped on with the ladies too and, and not to and start spearheading it as an as a you know you know the the the, the men aspect and the way she's talking about brennan it's like i hear it babe listen those those feelings that you have are valid so stick to it but you now making this movement of behavior saying like oh you know uh that th the men have come together and brennan you know had a plan yeah and you knew the plan right you knew the plan yeah what you needed to do was speak up what you need to do was say that, listen, I got it I got it wrong. I made a mistake. I shouldn't have gone with the plan because it hurt me and it became a problem. You know what I mean? Um, and we're seeing in part two that she walks off the stage after uh, uh, Trevor, Kevin, <laughs> uh, calls her out. You know what I mean? Like, And she walks off the stage, right? And I think something similar also happened with Keisha too. I think she got a little bit upset when Keisha called her out too. So clearly there's things with Emily that is unaccountable here <laughs> and uh, things that she doesn't want to take into account that she's actually doing. And that's contributing towards the situation. Now, I'm not going to say that if she was perfect, Brennan would have liked her. Brennan don't like her. Brennan, Brennan don't like her. But still, where it takes two to tango. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I, I, I think that's where she needs to look at herself as well. Yeah, I think, you know, and Mary 10 years says it all the time. You know, she's like, they got got. And I think that's the part, like, when you have these little plans and concoctions, you don't realize that it's you when you start up a foundation with a lie and you're trying to be manipulative, you think there's honor amongst thieves. There's no honor amongst thieves. And the ladies, for whatever reason, I guess something went the way that it didn't, they didn't want it to go. And so now they're unraveling because stuff got exposed. It's like, hey, when you guys all settled in and said we're gonna agree and we're just gonna portray things a particular way, and you think that you're not going to get caught up in the spin cycle? Come on now, guys. Do you not, do they don't read their reality show contracts clearly? Because the producers are going to be the ones like, yeah, no, y'all are going to get exposed. Because if y'all, we, we're the ones that do the manipulating. If y'all think y'all going to do the manipulating, yeah, we got something. And I think what, one of the things that I think went awry, because they started going off script, and again, I've been begging you to watch this, but a few episodes back, a few episodes back, um, I think Emily was starting to catch feelings for Brennan, or maybe she thought there might be a slight chance. 
I don't know what happened in her her mind. Maybe after the accident that she had, she was like, oh, maybe now I can get a chance. Maybe now we can put the plan to the side. No plan, nothing to the side. Anyway, somehow she was trying to throw Brennan under the bus with the experts. And then it came out that um, Cameron had a, something in his back pocket that Emily had made out with this guy at the bar. So it came out. They found out that em Emily, she had realized that, oh, he doesn't like me, whatever, whatever. So I'm just going to do what I want to do. So she found some random stranger and she made out with him at the bar. Bro, yes, exactly. So you're trying to throw him under the bus for whatever reason. Who knows? She's trying to throw Brendan under the bus. They're like, hey, <laughs> You you got your own stuff going on with you since we were still in the marriage process and you made out with somebody at the bar. So before you call me out, <laughs> make sure your hen house is clean. So this is what I'm saying. Like everybody, people are just moving all moving reckless. So that's why I don't really feel so bad. She was just like stumbling and fumbling her way through this whole process. D -d -d Damn, I didn't know that was even happening, bro. Yes, sir. Oh, damn. <laughs> oh, Emily, 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 Emily. <laughs> and when oh, Keisha no, confronted rocks. her about it, she almost had another meltdown. And she was like, well, the marriage was almost over, and he didn't want me anyway. She's tried to spin it back on him. Meanwhile, she's out here in bars making out with strangers. <laughs> Emily, but, no. but get this, there's no again no honor amongst thieves because guess who told on her claire claire told cameron cameron spilled the beans to brennan so <laughs> we thought we thought where cameron was getting his heart surgery he was collecting all the receipts so hey <laughs> oh this is what's happening oh my gosh so so do the ladies ever hold her accountable no becca was busy trying to be her fence jesus be a fence for 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 emily and she was sitting on the fence twerking on the fence looking dumb on the fence because <laughs> guess what <laughs> <laughs> homegirl was out here moving mad and then she's trying to say well well you wasn't really Brennan like stop talking about other people's relationships Becca you got your own problems so they didn't hold her accountable nope 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 damn 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 Emily Emily oh I didn't even know this was even happening look at this I went off away for a few weeks look what's happening the craziness right okay so uh, oh, this is not this is not a good look, ladies. What's going on? You're not holding your team accountable, but trying to hold a whole bunch of men accountable for the plans. This is making the it's making the ladies look even more worse. Cause you got Emily as being a complete spokesman. Meanwhile, she ain't being held accountable for her shenanigans that she was doing. Huh? That she was doing all the time. She was doing shenanigans all the time, and she wasn't being held accountable. But then she's being the ringleader to challenge the boys. This is what I'm trying to say. Sometimes you just got. Sometimes this is what you gotta say. You know what? I'm hurt by what they did. I know I did something wrong too, but I'm hurt by what you did. And people can and people can be like, you know what? We see it. Yeah, listen, we get it. You know, we understand that, you know, that it was hurtful, painful, and you move. But when you're trying to hold a whole punch of men, the whole men on the table accountable, when you know that you yourself have been, you yourself have, have been doing some shenanigans behind the scenes. Oh, come on, Emily. Emily. Come on, you know, that doesn't it doesn't erase everything that Brennan has done, but baby, maybe the way you addressed it, okay? Maybe the way that you went about it, you know what I mean? Because you knew that you was uh, you had some shenanigans underneath your sleeve, you know what I'm saying to you? That's wild, bro. It's super wild. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Nobody, when I tell you nobody's the only one that I could say from what I gleaned, and this is what we can see, because this they all moved wild was Becca, you know? She just lived in, she was Risa Tisa. She's the Risa Tisa of the season because she was just in complete delusion, 
like she had no idea what was going on. I didn't see it. She just was not, she was, she had her blinders on. But other than that, nothing really came out about how she was manipulative or, or playing games. She just decided to jump on the ladies' bandwagon because it just made sense because Austin was completely ridiculous. Mm. I don't mind. Um, okay, so uh, then obviously, uh, so what, what's your thoughts on obviously Cameron Claire? Because obviously, that situation, like you know, somebody's lying. You know, somebody is lying. Somebody has got the lying spirit from the Lord that He sent to Ahab. Because <laughs> somebody's lying. I'm telling you this now. <laughs> One of these two. Uh, what's your thoughts on this, man? Because someone is definitely lying. Yeah, the, the, uh, somebody got the serpent's tongue. That's that's. Mm -hmm. I just can't figure out who it is. I really can't because Claire tries to look. She's always like, oh, my God, really? Like, really? That happened? Claire, shut up. Like, we could tell you didn't like him. And you know what? If she would have just been honest, we could have got it. Remember, you and I know we talked about this. He took her to her place and he's like dangling spiders in front of her. Like, here, look at this spider. Look at that. You know, like we could get it like he's a little odd, but she was so busy trying to drag it out. Now, this is some other little behind the scenes tea that um, has kind of been picked apart. I, supposedly on Reddit, an ex of Cameron came out and was saying um, that they were and showed some texts and screenshots and receipts. Um, pretty much he created the whole thing about him leaving you know, how he needed to leave to have the surgery and how he was going to find a way to get them all out. And Claire was like, fine, I'll give it over to you. So that part is true. He came up with the plan, but she was fine with it. She was fine with it because she never wanted him. And the part that pisses me off with her is she tried to pretend like, oh, I, I had no idea. He's just being rude to me. And he never really wanted me. He said I wasn't his type. No, 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 Claire, I'm not buying it. You're a whole, you're, you're maybe not completely finished becoming a therapist, but you're well on your way. You can spot when somebody likes you or not. Don't just stop it. She's always confused. I don't know if he likes me. He's not attracted. You know, he liked you. You know, he liked you. He was busy. Cause remember in the beginning, Cameron was always like, oh, are we going to, you know, are we going to get this going? You know, I like affection. He like kept trying to like move the needle. And she was like, no, sleep in the second bedroom. So she never liked him. You you just, I, I'm just not going to buy that. I don't care what anybody says. She never liked him. And she said, and, and, and pretty much what he said is, if we can figure out a way, still get our money. You stay to the end. You know, let's work it out. Let's come up with an agreement because clearly you're just going to be playing me on TV and you don't want to look like the villain. And I don't want to look like the ugly duckling. So they agreed and they just played, played, play whatever games they played. But she's trying to act like, oh, I had no idea. I had no idea what was about to happen. Mm. Listen, I mean, clearly, uh, you know, Cameron, I mean, he must be a great actor because if he's faking that symptoms, the way he was breathing and all that stuff, I can hear the irregular breathings. Okay, so this guy must be a class A actor, method actor. Um, you know what I mean? Like he taking his role real serious. Okay. He ain't missed a beat yet. Okay. Cause I'll be hearing his heart of breathing. <laughs> okay. But when I watched it a couple of episodes in to, to now, I can still hear he's still hard of breathing. So, uh, I mean, he's a great actor. Something really did happen there. Now, obviously the second thing, obviously then, um, we knew that Claire wasn't attracted to him. We knew this from the jump. That was the biggest issue, right? That was the biggest issue. We knew that one of the issues was she wasn't attracted to him. And somehow it swung back the other way. She suddenly found him attractive or she wanted him or whatever when he didn't want her no more. We were saying this earlier in the season. Like, you know what I mean? Like, at least I got up to that point of the, the session. So why this whole pendulum swing all of a sudden, like as if she always liked him from the very beginning, always wanted him. It's like, baby, did you? Because I remember you wasn't even in that space at the very beginning from what we saw. So really and truly, I mean, you can't be fighting Cameron. You should be fighting the editing because the editing proves that you didn't actually like him from the very beginning. So why the sudden switch? Now there's something, there's something different here. You see what I'm saying to you? You know, and, and look, hey, look, you know, some people call me out for not being a therapist, but look at your therapist and look what they're doing. I'm just saying, but you know what I mean? Like, it's crazy, you know? So um, I, I don't know, like I, I'm looking at it and I'm like, um, 
you know, I, I saw it and I was like, look, I think there's something, you know, that has to be said on both sides. I still think, you know, Cameron maybe, you know, is a bit vindictive when he gets hurt. Yeah, we kind of saw that early on in season two. So I'm not, I have no doubt. Um, you know, when he told her that, you know, he cared about, he wants to, he wants to try again. I said, Cameron, please shut the heck up. You know, you don't want to try again. Stop lying. Okay. You know, you don't want to try again. All right. Let's stop lying. You, you ain't, you ain't going to spin us into a narrative of making you feel sorry for you because, oh, he still wants her. You know, you don't want her. Okay. And she damn right did not want you. Like at one point when he was saying that he loved her, she was like, <laughs> Negro, please. <laughs> Negro police, <laughs> go for it, Sean. <laughs> but you know what that, and this is why Cameron is the elite um, manipulator. Because you know when you're testing somebody, he was like, I dare you. <laughs> he was like, he was like, yeah, I want her. Now let's see what she says. And then what did she do? She backed up off the gas because he pushed her to, he made her tell the truth. And then, I don't know, you remember it came out of the, you know, she said, um, she was finally you know, Kevin did his job. I got to say this before I finish. Kevin did his job, this reunion. He stopped all that shucking and jiving and pandering and pretending like he doesn't know what's going on. So I was happy to see he did his job because he was like, are you seeing anybody? And then finally she was like, yes, she was seeing somebody. So, ma'am, what are you talking about? You knew. How long did it take you? How long did it take you between this show ending and now the reunion? for you to get somebody and to be in something serious. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, you, we knew you wasn't, we knew you wasn't on him. And that's it. And Cameron fleshed that out, kind of pushed that, pointed Kevin right in the right direction. Boom. Yeah, Trevor was on it. I can't lie to you. Trevor was madly on it. Uh, this episode, I can't lie to you. Calling them all What's out. with this Trevor stuff? Where I don't know it? why, but I don't know why that name came to me. As I was watching it, just, just, I just heard Trevor, Trevor, Trevor. You know what I mean? Maybe it's Trevor's in his middle name. We don't know how I could be prophesying. Um, but yeah, no, Trevor just came out to me and he was like, he was on point. You know what I mean? So he was asking questions, making sure people get, you know, um, you know, uh, you know, you know, who's in, you know, asking the right questions, calling people out, letting people know, da da da. And I think it's because also the couples are not together. I think because the couples are not together. So he actually can go a little bit more deeper. He's not trying to destroy no one's relationship. It's like you're already broken. So let me go in and hold you guys accountable. Um and uh yeah, no, it's interesting to 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 see because I feel like um it's interesting to see because I feel like when it comes to 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 Cameron and Claire, they both kind of test each other. I think I think that's what it is. They saw each other. That was the thing. He saw her and she saw him. And you know, it's it's always funny when you see a couple where the persons the, the people see each other. You know, they see each other and when they see each other, the problem is that both of you can't both of you are trying to play, but both of you can't play because both of you see each other. So it's like a game of chess. Um so yeah definitely uh Claire she put on the waterworks you know, she put on the tears. Yeah, you know, like I'm just being so misunderstood. You know what I mean? You know, uh, Cameron made sure his heart was making sure it was. You know what I mean? Just to make sure he put that on too. Like you ain't going. You're not the only one. <laughs> you ain't the only one <laughs> today. I'm gonna let them know my heart condition is in a desperation situation. Okay. Uh, do you know what killed me the most is when is when Trevor told him you gonna be good. He said, Oh no, I'm gonna be good. Don't worry about that. <laughs> So, oh, you don't care about your heart condition right now? <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I saw that knee, he was gone. He was in deep. So, yeah, man. <laughs> but you know what? A, a good liar always takes a little bit of truth. So I'm sure there's a heart condition. There's something he needed to go to the doctors for. But you know, sometimes when you have an elective thing going on and you can determine when you want to do it. So... You know, I, again, I'm sure he had a heart thing, but it just the timing was just way too convenient for him to just kind of wiggle his way right out of that. So um, I'm sure there's some like just like the signs you were picking up. Yeah, it, it, there was something there, but I think he was amping it up a little bit more and he probably moved the time time period up a little bit to do whatever he needed to do. And then, you know, have your doctor say just like people. This is the age old trick that people used to do all the time. Um, you know, it's like at work, 
somebody is that they're not doing well in the wor at work they're starting to underperform they get stressed out they automatically go and leave i don't know if they do that in the uk coach but that is a huge thing in the states all of us all of a sudden you've never heard about an illness and it's not like they had like a, a a terminal illness it'll just be like oh the person has to be out and you're like and that resets the clock so they'll be out for three months four months resets the clock then either they'll stretch it out until they find another job and then all of a sudden they they resign or they come back and then they come back for a little bit, get enough time, and then they go back out. People play this game all the time. He just did it on TV. I've seen that all the time. So sometimes it's a it's a legitimate thing that they stretch out or it's something made up. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. You're saying this is that he kind of stretched it just to – uh, you know, make sure that, you know, he ain't gonna have to come and see her ass again. <laughs> and she would be calling him uh, like he's like up from a payphone going to a freaking collect call um, <laughs> in that situation because that's what we were seeing her collect calling him um, but we never saw her go to the hospital so I don't know if that if that ever ever happened right so um, I'm sure the cameras would have at least gone outside the hospital at least to show us a little sign but uh, I don't know I don't know if that's that's the case she kept blaming it on him. I want to go see him. She was saying on the phone, I want to go see him. And then she would look at the cameras. But Cameron says he knows how I am. So I, he wants me to stay away. He doesn't want me to get stressed. <laughs> Yo, the games that people are playing, yeah, are the wildest, bro. Like, they are the wildest, bro. The games that these people play be playing... Super elite gays, man. Like I said, Claire and Claire and Claire and um, Claire and Cameron, they see each other. So I'm not even mad at it. They they both were, um, and I, but then I'm like, where did he get the story about the ex boyfriend? And just I thought I was a little bit. I don't know if that. I don't know if I believe that she had an ex boyfriend necessarily so close. Um, cause he also didn't follow up. Also, at least I didn't edit it and show that he followed it up after. Cause I would have been that would have been my main motive. Like no no no, she had an ex boyfriend the whole entire time. I, I, I think for me a little bit, that may be a little bit of a, I think he dragged that story a little bit forward, knowing that it could be used as a half truth and then kind of dragged it to make you tell a story. I don't know if I believe the ex-boyfriend situation. So what do you think about the ex-boyfriend situation? I think again, he's a, he's a, he's a crafty liar. So there's some truth to that. And the other part, I don't know if you remember any of this, but supposedly she likes black guys. Supposedly she likes black guys. Yeah, I know. So, I just know his mind was going. Yep. Supposedly, she, you know, the BBC and her are friends. So, hey. <laughs> so, I think the expert boyfriend was a black guy. They, when they started discussing their ex exes, I think that came up, and she might have dibbled and dabbled with him before the process. Now, was it happening throughout the process? I don't think Claire is that messy, you know. But I do think. There was the ex-boyfriend. It did come up because this is what happens too. You start lying with somebody, like literally lying, lying, and then you think y'all have a plaque. So you get, you, you know, a pact rather. Y'all start to get comfortable. Y'all start to get comfortable. So she probably let her guard down like, oh, so she talked to him like that was one of her friends. Meanwhile, Cameron is collecting data. He was like, the day you try to flip this on me, I got enough information where I could take you down. So she told him something. What that something was, I'm not sure. But there was a dude. Well, um, yeah. And he said he wanted a slender European, maybe another way they didn't align. Yeah, I heard that when he said that. That comment about the the European stuff, I said, oh, that ain't gonna go down well, um, you know. But then again, she didn't want him, so it didn't it didn't really matter, you know what I'm saying to you. So either way, um, it was gonna be a problem. Do you know what I'm saying to you? Um, and he probably did say it that that way. He probably did say it that way in a way that was gonna be hurtful, because you know, Cameron, he gonna say it in a way that gonna get your heart, your hurt, your feelings hurt when he feels hurt. You know what I mean? When he feels like he might be rejected. So more than likely, he did say it that way. You know what I mean? A get back. Um, I got you moment, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't, I don't, I can't, I can't say that, I, I don't, that he definitely didn't say it to try and hurt her. Um, so that was another one that was interesting um, as well. Um, any other thoughts on uh, Claire and, and Cameron? No, I think they, they finished themselves. 
you know, mutual destruction. Because <laughs> they both kind of got exposed, you know. So. No, I definitely hear that. Um, then obviously uh, we had, so we've done Emily Bre Brennan, we've done uh, Claire and thingy, we've done Austin. The last one was obviously then uh, Michael and Chloe, because Orion and Lauren, 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 we've played them out. They ain't nothing left to say, man. Um, uh, but uh, Chloe and Michael, what was your thoughts on that, Captain, man? What was your thoughts? Man. I th Michael did Chloe wrong, you know, he did, he, he did, he did a wrong. And I think ultimately what happened is there, <clears throat> they were like meshing, you know, they got down to business, you know, the only couple that got a little action. And I think, um, he got, he got a little scared. I initially thought because there was a scene where she wanted all these foster kids and she wanted to have a farm. She wanted them, bro, they were doing house tours and she wanted them to rent a house. She, they were looking at houses that were $5,000 a month. $5,000 a month. And he was like, uh, like, he was like, so you're going to have to pay a little more. I mean, the whole, he was like trying to explain it to her, like the, but the benefit of us moving in together is we could get a nice place and then we could actually save. He was like, but if we do something like this, somebody's going to be paying a little bit more. Cause you're talking about $5,000 a month. I'm like $5,000 a month for rent. You better get a mortgage or find something more reasonable. But yeah, she wanted to have like three or four foster kids, teenagers and a farm full of goats and, and cows. So I think she was in Delulu and she was like hard pressed on it. I think she moved a little bit more comfortably outside of that. Um, so that was kind of like her piece. I, I I can't figure out old dude though. I don't know where she, you know, she finally, she stopped nudging him about wanting to wear her pearls and stuff. I think, you know what, because you know what it was and this is what it was. And I'm speculating obviously, but she just wasn't sure if the delash was going to delash with all that pearls and necklaces and jewelry and skirts she was like is he going to be able to put it down once he put it down she was like <laughs> she was like okay whatever i'm i'm all i'm all good <clears throat> but i think once he got in and unfortunately this is where men and women differ it's not that he didn't like the intimacy, but it's like, you know, where you have that clarity, we'll call it. I won't use the full part of the expression, but he had his clarity and he was like, no, she's a nice girl, but I'm not going to be able to do it. And I think that's somehow sometimes the difference between men and women um, when it comes to sexual intimacy. Some women will, depending on the connection, will fall deeper and men, depending on the connection, can, you know, get this clarity moment. And then they're like, yeah, I might still be able to have intimacy with you, but that doesn't mean I want the relationship. Yeah, listen, I can't lie to you. Um, I just couldn't understand what Michael was saying. Um, and again, I haven't watched the whole season. So I was just waiting for the penny to drop as in what really was the issue. Um, you know, in the scenario between Michael and Chloe. Um, again, I'm not saying that Chloe's innocent. Like I said, she was smiling and I know that she didn't like, I know she, I know when he put the pearls on, I don't care how much she smiled. Okay. All right. She was going to get her back blown out and be out too. Now, of course, I know she said, uh, I think she said yes on the reunion day, on, on, on the day, isn't it? Right. She said, yes. Yeah. So, you know, there was obviously clearly enough of the energy that she thought she was going to go, she was going to go forward. Um, and I don't know how much they discussed at the actual, uh, obviously before that, it seems like she was um, surprised by it. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised that she did say yes. Cause I, in my head, I'm like, baby, but you saw, you saw some of the, uh, I remember you went away, you wanted to spend some time alone. You had to figure things out in your brain. Like, baby, that was your separation time. You you knew that this something wasn't quite right. You knew something wasn't quite right when he was wearing your pearls like Marge Simpson. You knew something wasn't right. You know what I mean? Like there was something that wasn't wasn't sitting with you. So 
Um, I was confused as to why she wanted to say yes at the end of the thing, but I guess she wants to give it a try and, you know, but I, you know, st I got to admit, I appreciate her standing 10 toes down. She said, listen, no, I'm not with nobody, but I know what's for me. And I know that if it was for me, it wouldn't have gone nowhere else. And I'm not mad at it because I was like, yeah, you know what? You know, I, I hear it. Michael had an opportunity, dropped the ball. And he, I mean, listen, hey, like if he wanted her, he would have gone for her. Do you know what I'm saying to you? I mean, for you to get a woman that was going to accept your pearls and everything, clutching your chest and you wanted to wear her clothes, my brother, it sounds like a keeper because there ain't many women that are going to be accepting that, you know? I'm with you, brother. And I think, listen, I'm all for, you know, live your truth, do what you want to do, blah, 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 sis, boom, blah. But at the end of the day, when you start dippling and deviling in so many things that are like of the other gender, you have to realize like your options are going to be very limited, just like you said. And then it also makes for a very confused person. He's confused because, and I'm not even talking about like sexuality, I'm just talking about his behavior. Like you want to put on pearls and a skirt, you want to put on nail polish. Like how many things of women do you want to take on? You know, like that just becomes confusing, which is why he under, ended up being confused. Because at a certain point, you kind of have to realize like, you have to level set with yourself. And we always say to like women, sometimes you have to like just be honest about where you are in the dating landscape, where you are in the relationship landscape. You know, usually men, we can tend to be a little more realistic, like, hey, at a certain point, I got to be a little more realistic. This guy is in his late 30s. I don't know if he was 37, 38, whatever, somewhere in that range. So at the end of the day, it's like you have to realize, hey, I'm an acquired taste. And he said that you found a beautiful woman. You obviously have some level of chemistry. She's she's really seems like loyal. She's a giving person. You have to figure out like, OK, we can work together. Maybe I could say, hey, baby, I'm down for a couple of foster kids, but I need them to be under five and just two. All right. And can we scratch the cows? You know, I know you want some cows, but can we just scratch that? Like, can we not have the cows? You know, like, let's have a conversation and see how we can work things together. It's like, bro, you're almost 40. You should be able to navigate a conversation because he still couldn't figure out. He was like, but I like her. You know, she's really cool. We had a connection. I really blah, 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 blah. He's doing all this word salad. It's like, bro, like, what do you think? You think you're going to look up around another woman? She's going to have everything and that you're not going to have to work at some things with her? It's like, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, man. I mean, listen, um, it's interesting to see. I think, you know, when you deep it with Michael, right? Um, <laughs> when you deep it with Michael, um, he really did express his full range, you know? Um, and that woman took it on. Whether she was smiling or not, whether she separated herself, she took it on and said yes. You know what I mean? Like, that's what I'm saying. He dropped the ball. Do you know what I'm saying to you? It's, it's like you opened yourself up and she said, okay. Right? Whereas other women would have been like, oh, oh okay. <laughs> you know you get in a no at the end of the day. Okay? They'll, they'll start distancing themselves. You know what I mean? So, I, I, you know, when she, when she, and I love the fact that she had a little moment where she was like, your mom's situation, you didn't tell your mom, da, da, da. and she was like, I only start thinking about those things properly at the end. So once, once you said no, that's why I'm starting to think about it before. Oh yeah, I thought about it, but I supported you. And Michael's trying to use it, you know, Michael's saying, yeah, I didn't tell my mom because, you know, to the situation, you know, da, 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 da. and I was like, Michael, you didn't tell your mom because you, let's be honest, bro, that relationship with your mom, you were scared of your mom. So you didn't want to tell your mom the truth that you had married somebody. Okay. All right. And I really think it's because maybe you're not actually being honest about you. You know what I mean? Like you're not standing in your absolute truth. You're willing to stand in your absolute truth about sh wearing pearls around your neck, wearing skirts and dresses, wanting to borrow your wife's clothes on national television, but you don't want to tell your mum that you want to get, you go and get married and you got married to this woman. My brother, something's not quite right. So the woman had every, so to be fair, she had every right to be questioning you because honestly, I'm going to be honest with you, bro, like seeing that kind of behavior, I, but uh, I apologize. Um, but listen, as a woman trying to dress up as a dude, I should say that way then. Um, then I would have some issues. You know what I mean? 
you know, I would have some issues. I, I would be like, yo, why are you doing that? <laughs> I would be like, why, 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 why would I stay for that? Do you know what I'm saying? She, so the fact that she had a whole range, I think, yeah, I, I, have to be, I have to be fair to her. She gave you everything. And there's nothing more you can say about that. Do you know what I'm saying? She, she gave you everything. What else can you say? <laughs> I apologize, honestly. I didn't, I didn't mean to offend anybody. I wasn't trying to offend anybody. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't trying to offend anybody. I do apologize. Wrong wording. I apologize, guys. Anybody in the community, I'm not trying to offend anybody. I don't need any trouble. Wrong word. Okay. All right. Wrong word. <laughs> Sean. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong word in that. Honestly, I wasn't trying to offend anybody. So I do apologize. Honestly, swear down. Like, I'm not trying to offend anybody. That was wrong wording. Forgive me, please. <laughs> what are we talking about? Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm lost. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, well, I mean, we were talking about. Uh, Talk about uh, a good old Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Next topic. <laughs> yeah, no, I think. Uh, listen, I, 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 I'm at a loss, you know. And and now I want justice for Chloe because she seems like just such a lovely woman. I love. Matter of fact, I mean, let's just we just got to stop and give Chloe her her praises and her flowers because. She didn't go along with the women and that pink thing. She could have easily jumped on that bandwagon, especially when she said yes and Michael said no. She stood in her truth. She still said he was a nice guy. She didn't say anything disparaging about him, like where she could have like railed him. At the end of the day, I'm in total support of Chloe. Hey, listen, I might call up Chloe and be like, hey, baby girl, you know, have you you found your person? Can we negotiate the, the foster kids and the cows and let's come to some type of agreement, you know? Don't have uh, Dr. Umar come for me. <laughs> but, yeah, no, I really appreciated her. And I, I thought she was a breath of fresh air, you know? Now, listen, some stuff may come out about her, but for the most amongst these cast of characters, I think she was she stood amongst all the giants. She was the best. Yeah, I mean, I can't lie to you. You know what I mean? I think, I think that the, 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 like I said, the, the realest thing is like, you know, you in a relationship, you want acceptance. You know what I mean? In a relationship, you want acceptance. You want a sense of belonging. You want a safe zone. You want someone that's going to cover you. Do you know what I'm saying to you? And I won't lie to you. She did a great job because some of us would have really uncovered some people. You know what I mean? Like, you know, and I know at one point she wanted to, she wanted to question the masculinity and she kind of did it in a very... I like to call it in a very respectful manner. Um, we all knew what she wanted to say, um, but you know she held it down, and it's a missed opportunity. So there's a there's a deeper conversation to have with Michael as to what what's going through your head. What why can't you accept that she was accepting of you? Why were you running and dashing and self sabotaging so early, right? And you know uh, it's funny because obviously you were ditched at the altar to then go and ditch the person at the altar. <laughs> I mean, let's, you know, to ditch a person at decision day, sorry. You know what I mean? So you, you had the opportunity to, you know, correct what's happened to you at the altar. Someone left you before they even saw you, you know, before they even, before they even got to know you, sorry. And before they even got to even go beyond. And you finally got someone who went beyond. Okay. And enjoy and spend time with that person and let them see you for who you are. And in that moment, you leave her on decision day and run. There's a, there's a deep issue of him. A scripture came to me. And mm. um, <clears throat> so it's like, and, and when you were talking, it's like, I don't think, and this is from somebody, obviously, most people know I was married before. It's like, and the, the thing that got me in, in, um, you know, to get to the point to want to marry her. It's like when you, when somebody gets you and when somebody calls you friend, you know, they say God calls us friend, Jesus Christ. We are his friend, you know, no greater love than a man that would lay down his life for a friend. And I mean, I think Chloe gave him permission and was his friend. 
You know what I'm saying? Like that to me, like, and I'm not saying he should be like me, but when I look at that principle, when I look at somebody who looks at you, looks beyond, whoa, looks beyond your flaws and sees you for you and still wants you, she wanted that man. She was still willing to say, despite your flaws, I'm willing to go the distance and give you a shot. And you're going to pass that up. I think Michael needs to do some self-examination. Because when somebody is willing to accept you at your least, not wanting to introduce you to his mama, like that's a tough pill to swallow. When you already know that um, he had been through this process and rejected and she still accepted him. I know Claire probably isn't a believer, but sometimes people just take on those characteristics, take on the, that embodiment of that and how he missed that in her. Man, just like she said at the reunion, somebody's going to see her and appreciate her for who she is. Because for her to be willing to do that and to get past all of that, yeah, I don't know what Michael got going on. But he missed his blessing in, in, in Chloe, I think 100%. It is what it is. It is what it is. I definitely hear that. Any other thoughts on the uh, reunion? Any other parts that we missed on that that we haven't tackled? So we covered we covered Austin and Becca. Mm. We covered um, Claire and uh, <clears throat> Cameron. No, we didn't talk about Lauren. Lauren and freaking old lion. Uh, because Orion said the right words. I'm de it's a dead horse. Okay, <laughs> dead horse. <laughs> <laughs> he said it's a dead horse. Stop flogging it. That's been you know what I'm saying. To death. <laughs> That's what beating the death. And Lawrence, <laughs> I felt for Lawrence still. I mean, because he's uh, Orion is, Orion, uh, Orion's belt has been going on like he's been in the in the damn stars with the situation. I can't lie to you because he's acting like he's he's been trying to be cordial with her. And my brother, we know you ain't been that way, my brother. Okay, you've been playing up for the cameras um, and doing way too much. Um, but uh, did you glean anything else? From them on a reunion, I know they didn't get to be much, but you know. Yeah, I'm kind of over Lauren too. I mean, o Orion is Orion, as he's been dubbed. You know, he is a liar. He's always gonna socially, you know, he's gonna reconstruct rather than I socially, but he's gonna reconstruct a story. And uh, you know, I'm I'm over him and his foolishness and his inability to hold himself accountable. But Lauren is on this sanctimonious hill. And the thing that killed me about her is she was like, and you did the same thing to me and you and you, baby girl, y'all were together for two days. <laughs> what did this man do to you in two days <laughs> other than tell you, you know, if she want to be upset, maybe she could be upset about the fact that he dragged the whole, you know, comment about, you know, the Native American comment too far. But at the end of the day, she's making it seem like, and this is what happens when misery stews together, you start to take on other people's misery. And that's what I see with Lauren. Like, Lauren, baby girl, be a light, be a joy, like free yourself from the shackles of these women. Like, why are you tying your story to theirs? You was with this guy for two days. And she's like, yeah, because they all did this to us. Ma'am, he divorced you when as soon as y'all got back home from the honeymoon. You should have been free from him. Like, what is she talking about? And that's what I'm saying. People have to be careful of secondhand trauma. That's the lesson I took from that with her. Is like, because you can't be taking on other people's struggles. And now it's in your head that you done been through something too. When it's not even your, your fight. Listen, I totally hear you, Cap. Can't lie to you. I really do. Well, listen, shout out to Trevor. Uh, you know, this this episode, the Trevor, the host, was amazing. Um, great, great questions. Help people accountable. Um, you know, make sure to, you know, dive a little bit deeper. Let people know that, listen, that's not the answer. They're looking for more. Um, so shout out to him because he, he did a good job um, as well going forward. And um, I just want to say, you know, uh, with the, uh, you know, with the situation with, um next week's episode i just want to understand why austin's beard is missing i don't know if anyone noticed it but austin's beard from next episode is missing and i don't understand how he went from a beard to no beard it is very weird and i've got a little picture for you i'll show you guys hold on let me see if i can get it correctly i want to get it because i want to hold on 
Okay, he looks like a he looks like a Simpson character. Okay, all right. What is going on here with Austin? Okay, where is the beard? How did the beard disappear already? Okay, all right. I want to know why the beard is missing. Okay, he looks like a Simpson character, and I want to understand what happened because he had the beard before then, and I don't get it. If he had, if he had come on this reunion as no beard, I would have understood. But he came with a beard and had no beard at the end. How is that possible? How was it possible that he had no beard? Did he go and shave off during the, what happened? Did he find some lice in there during the, during the process of the showing or whatever and had to shave it all off? Like, why did he just suddenly show it? That, that's my thing. I don't know. Sean, what do you think? Before we go, You were the one that brought that out to me earlier, and I don't know. Sometimes they film these reunions in, in over days, so maybe when he got home at night, he decided to shave his beard off. And they told him to wear the same clothes as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I know they have to do that. Like, if they re reshoot another day, they just they have to wear the same clothes. So maybe they did it in another day, another time, days later. I'm not really sure. I think that was hella weird and confusing, and I can't believe you picked it up. <clears throat> Jacqueline, N said, uh, Jacqueline F said the comment that I was thinking but did not want to say. But since somebody in the comments said it, then... Damn. I just caught what it meant when they said that. Yeah, so. Well, listen, Sean, do what you do best, brother. <laughs> we'll, wait for, we'll wait for next week. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, folks, the long-awaited review for MAPS is here. Kojo has decided to oblige us and uh, get us back together. So let's hope and pray that we could just close this season on out and get ready for Chicago. Um, <clears throat> but great discussion tonight. Good times. I think the reunion uh, did everything that the reunion needed to do. Uh, we thank God for Kevin, a.k.a. Trevor, <laughs> for doing his job, doing his level best. And I think, you know, the lessons that we've learned, there are no honor amongst thieves. Um, if you get to lying in your relationship, understand you sow seeds of lying, then that's the fruit that you're going to produce is more lies. So just be careful about who you get into bed, a bed of lies with, because you're going to wake up with them same bed of lies. So look at yourself in the mirror. Take accountability. Every relationship, whether successful or failed, teaches us lessons. Please, when you leave and exit your relationships, don't get to pointing that finger outside. Take the, the first pink finger and look at yourself and look at what you can learn so you don't do the same thing again. Back to you, Coach. Listen, appreciate you guys. Honestly, we'll be back next week uh, for another one. And uh, we're back on uh, Saturday for obviously Ready to Love, uh, you know, um, reunion part two. Um, and uh, we'll definitely be back. Uh, uh, yeah, we'll definitely be back giving you guys a super panel as well on that. So hopefully you guys will see you soon. I need to get a haircut tomorrow. Um, but uh, we appreciate you guys. Stay locked, stay loaded. We'll see you again very, very soon. Much love, much appreciation.